corrosion problems in thermal power plants lecture by dr g subramanian chief scientist retired csir central electrochemical research institute in thermal power plants the following types of corrosion are generally encountered water gas acid corrosion high temperature corrosion low temperature corrosion oil ash corrosion stress corrosion fatigue corrosion water and steam side corrosion in power plants can be ascribed to the presence of the following feed water 1 dissolved oxygen 2 carbon dioxide 3 low ph of water and 4 a combination of all the three factors mentioned above since in a boiler system there are various other areas separate consideration should be given to understand the corrosion problem and evolve effective means for that control causes of corrosion the alkalinity of feed water must be raised so that acidic nature is prevented it is however possible for acidic conditions to be produced by hydrolysis of chlorides at a later stage Magnesium chloride for example is readily hydrolyzed into magnesium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid similarly magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride may be may cause acidity as a result of interaction with production of sodium sulfate magnesium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid carbon dioxide dissolved in water is acidic and accelerates the corrosion of boiler waters especially in presence of oxygen Therefore unless magnesium salts are removed completely or unless there is sufficient reserve of alkalinity in the system to neutralize acids so produced corrosion will occur but if pH of feed water is greater than about 7.5 and the boiler water is maintained at a pH around about 11 corrosion can be prevented to a considerable extent galvanic attack Electrochemical corrosion also occurs when two dissimilar elements are in contact in an aqueous solution. The potential of corroding cell depends on the position in which the elements are placed in the electrochemical series and upon the concentration of ions in the solution. Oxygen attack. This is caused by differential aeration. The magnitude of the electromotive force developed between the two areas of the metal exposed to different conditions of aeration is sufficient to cause localized attack of iron when placed in water containing zones of varying dissolved oxygen content. If a piece of scale, paint, dirt or even a bubble of gas adheres to the surface of the iron or steel immerse in water containing traces of dissolved oxygen differential aeration cell will be set up corrosion will start under this layer and a crust of ferrous hydroxide will form if this crust so produced is not removed mechanically the action will continue in the course of time a hole will appear such conditions or very common in boiler to develop corrosion of this nature during shutdown of boiler this effect may be observed the tubes retain water when boiler is drained as water accumulates in the middle and cannot be emptied by gravity after the water is stagnant for a few days corrosion will start at rough spots inside the tubes a pale green crust of ferrous hydroxide will grow over the areas as oxygen is observed at the surface of the water and gradually diffuses downwards crust penetrate inside the tubes if this condition is allowed to persist the crust gradually darkens in color and finally transforms into red color of ferric hydroxide in thermal power plant corrosion is commonly encountered in the following areas one feed water circuits including piping walls pumps and heat transfer equipment two boiler internal surfaces and economizers three condensed return circuits four wet stages of turbines five cooling water systems 
feed water circuits feed water to a boiler may consist of 100% makeup or a combination of makeup and various amounts of condensate returns raw makeup water either surface water or well water may be saturated with dissolved oxygen surface water is particularly or normally saturated with oxygen because of direct contact with atmosphere whereas deep well waters may be free from or contain only a very small amount of oxygen return condensate may contain oxygen as a result of air leakage through pipe fittings pumps wall glands since the temperature of the raw makeup water introduced into the feed water system is generally quite low corrosion of piping valves water softeners etc due to the presence of oxygen in the cold water is not too serious even though the solubility of oxygen is highest at low temperature however as the temperature of water increases in passing through heat exchangers pumps or in mixing with hot condensate returns the corrosive action of oxygen is greatly accelerated figure 1 pitting corrosion caused by oxygen in feed water system this type of corrosion arises from the presence of oxygen resulting pitting of metal surfaces you can see pits even see through pits holes in the piping system generally the rate of reaction is approximately doubled for each 18 degree fahrenheit increase in temperature simultaneously there is another factor that works in opposite manner by which solubility of oxygen is decrease with increase in temperature experience show has shown that speed of corrosive action is greatest at a temperature of approximately 160 degree to 180 degree fahrenheit beyond which an increase in temperature tends to de- decelerate the corrosion rate surface water and well water may also contain free carbon dioxide which is corrosive if it is present in water along with oxygen the combined effect proves to be more corrosive corrosion as a result of carbon dioxide can be seen by general thinning and grooving of pipe walls and metal surfaces figure 2 depicts the corrosion in presence of carbon dioxide gas resulting thinning of pipe walls and to cause holes you can see the pipe walls there is see through pits see through corrosion pits owing to the presence of carbon dioxide gas in a surface condensing plant where the feed water is relatively pure the pH of water may be low and iron and steel pipe will be attacked even at low temperature giving rise to ferrous hydroxide this attack will continue till ferrous hydroxide being alkaline rises a pH to approximately 8.3 when no more iron will go into solution any oxygen present will oxidize ferrous ion to ferric ion to form insoluble precipitate of ferric hydroxide carbon dioxide present in water lowers the ph and dissolves the iron the ferric hydroxide will adhere to pipings and will and will be carried into boiler to coat the boiler tubes to cause localized attack and tube burn out a combination of corrosion and erosion presents a further problem in the case of pumps valves and pipe fittings where a sudden change in direction results in high velocity of water stream to clean any iron deposit that might form on the surface the base metal is exposed to further attack of corrosion and erosion the corrosive influence of boiler feed water as a result of the presence of dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide may be eliminated through mechanical deaeration of feed water which will reduce the oxygen content to less than 0.005 ml per liter and free carbon dioxide to zero in practice engineers frequently prefer to follow mechanical deaeration with chemical oxygen scavenger for removing the last traces of oxygen and second problem boiler internal surfaces including economizers 
Any corrosion that occurs in a boiler can usually be traced for the presence of dissolved oxygen in feed water. In general, carbon dioxide is not a contributing factor as long as desired alkalinity and pH of boiler water is maintained. Oxygen must be dissolved in the boiler heater before it can attack ferrous metal surfaces. Normally, the dissolved gaseous present in the feed water entering a boiler drum are immediately released to the stream due to the substantial increase in temperature. However, a sudden increase in the feed water demand and high boiler circulation carries the scholar water entering into the downcomer boiler tubes before the oxygen has had a chance to be released thus causing corrosion below the water line and at the tube entrances. Sometimes corrosion with a boiler can be attributed to the iron oxides contained in the feed water. If these oxides are not removed by blow down or allowed to form deposits in the areas of less rapid circulation, a hot dense adherent scale can form to cause overheating of the metal and further production of iron oxide. Intercrystalline cracking or caustic embattlement may accompany this overheating of the tube metal by allowing high concentrations of caustic soda to form at these overheated spots to cause attack along the grain boundaries of the metal. Also caustic soda may concentrate in other hideout spots in the boiler such as the end of boiler tubes where the tubes are rolled into boiler drum or caustic can precipitate out of the solution at such points where the formation of steam is too rapid for replacement by water circulation and the tubes become dry. Intercrystalline cracking may also occur at the points of high caustic concentration. If the boiler metal is stressed and if the boiler water possesses embrittlement characteristics, this type of attack was more pronounced in the case of riveted boiler seams. Figure 3. The use of welded seams has however minimized this condition. The figure 3 picturizes intercrystalline cracking due to caustic concentration in boiler water. Earlier investigations towards prevention of caustic embitterment favored the maintaining of certain sulfate carbonate ratios as suggested by ASME. However, relatively recent work indicates that these ratios do not necessarily prevent such attack. Another method is to maintain certain ratio of sodium nitrate to sodium hydroxide. The most recent method for plants where feed water is mostly condensate is the coordinated pH phosphate method where trisodium phosphate is fed to the boiler water to maintain the desired pH and to eliminate free sodium hydroxide in water. Whether a boiler water has embattlement characteristics can be determined by embattlement detector which has been developed by Bureau of Mines of United States. Many high pressure boilers incorporate economizers through which the boiler fed water passes before entering the boiler drums. This is an economic measure whereby the temperature of feed water is increased by taking heat from the hot combustion gases passing to stock, thus reducing the feed cost. Economizers necessarily have steel tubes because of high boiler pressure. If therefore the feed water contains oxygen or carbon dioxide, corrosion of steel tubes will occur as the temperature of feed water is elevated in passing through the economizer. Figure 5. Figure 5 illustrates the failure of economizer tube in a high pressure boiler due to high concentration of oxygen in feed water.
the third main factor is condensate return circuits condensate return line corrosion may be caused by the presence of dissolved oxygen or carbon dioxide in the condensate or combination of both an efficient mechanical deaeration heater placed in the feed water system will remove oxygen and carbon dioxide before it enters the boiler in the boiler however bicarbonate or carbonate alkalinity present in the water will decompose to introduce carbon dioxide as to steam it has been demonstrated that the high temperature conditions within a boiler cause complete decomposition of bicarbonate alkalinity for each 100 ppm of bicarbonates in the boiler feed water 79 ppm of carbon dioxide will be given off with the steam for each 100 ppm of normal carbonates approximately 35 ppm of carbon dioxide will be evolved at points where the steam is condensed in the return system the carbon dioxide will be redissolved to form carbonic acid and corrosion takes place in the return lines the feed of ammonia or ammonia compounds to the system is practiced in many plants for neutralizing the carbon dioxide and raising the pH of the condensate the high boiler temperatures decompose these compounds to release ammonia gas to the steam as the steam condenses the ammonia is redissolved in the condensate and reacts with carbon dioxide to form highly soluble carbonate compounds thus raising the ph control of ammonia into the system is rather difficult due to its high volatility high concentrations of ammonia will attack copper and zinc bearing metals utilizing amines have been used in many plants in the past few years as a substitute of ammonia for the prevention of condensate return line corrosion organic amines example cyclohexylamines benzylamines or morpholine or alkaline in nature these are quite soluble in water and will readily volatilize with the boiler steam on redissolving with condensate the amine combines with any carbon dioxide present to form an amine carbonate or bicarbonate this neutralizes the carbon dioxide and raises the ph to prevent corrosion of return system although amine treatment is more expensive than ammonia treatment the use of neutralizing amines provides easier control of condensate ph also the danger of attack on copper or zinc alloys is eliminated fleming amines to protect return lines against corrosion is more recent practice instead of reacting with the carbon dioxide in the steam this type of fleming amine forms non metable film on metal surfaces it thus acts as a protective barrier between the metal and the condensate usually this type of fleming amine is fed into the main steam line where it is diffused and carried along with the steam to form a film on all of the contacting surface usually 15 to 30 ppm of fleming amine is necessary to cover all metal surfaces and is said to be independent of carbon dioxide present in the condensate this type of treatment is reported to be cheaper than neutralizing amine treatment and the fourth factor is wet stages of turbine in a power plant steam passes through various stages of turbine and is finally condensed on the turbine surface this condensate is then pumped back to the boiler through several stages of closed heaters with usually a deaerating heater the boiler feed water consists almost entirely of condensate with only 1 to 2 percentage makeup water being added to the system to take care of losses due to leakage the makeup water is either demineralized water or vapor from evaporators due to high purity of feed water the alkalinity is essentially zero therefore there is no breakdown of alkalinity in the boiler to give off carbon dioxide to the steam however the relatively pure water has low ph value to cause ion to go into solution with result that 
Feed water lines will be attacked unless pH value of the condensate is elevated. The high purity water necessitates the complete removal of oxygen from the system so as to prevent corrosion. Therefore, the deaerating heater in the cycle must be a good and efficient operating unit to give zero oxygen content in the deaeration water. Many plants, as an additional precaution, employ a chemical reducing agent such as sodium sulfide to remove minute traces of oxygen in feed water. However, sodium sulfide decomposes in high pressure boilers to give off sulfur dioxide to the steam which redissolves as steam condenses to form sulfuric acid. Thus, the pH of the condensate is reduced to cause corrosion of the turbine wet stages and condensate lines. In order to neutralize the effect of sulfur dioxide in the condensate and to maintain pH of the condensate at the optimum level, many power stations feed ammonia or ammonia compounds in boiler water. The ammonia gas that passes off with steam recondenses in the condensate and rises pH. However, ammonia will not redissolve in the condensate as, they rap as rapidly as sulfur dioxide with the result that serious corrosion occurs in the turbine stages. Immediately following the first condensation of steam, even though sufficient ammonia is present in the steam to maintain the desired pH value at the condensate pump discharge. Amine type chemicals to substitute for ammonia have been tried successfully in some plants where ammonia could not give full protection against corrosion through a turbine and condensate return system. Similarly, morpholine that has higher vapor pressure was found to bring down carbon dioxide to zero. The end content was found to have reduced to consistently to 0.1 ppm or less. In high pressure boiler, sodium sulfide being an, effect, an ineffective oxygen scavenger. Hydrazine holds particular promise. Hydrazine is used in hydrate, hydrate form and there has been considerable use of this product. And the fifth factor causing corrosion in a power plant system is cooling water systems. In any cooling water system, corrosion or erosion of metal parts and excessive deposits of scale which might decrease the heat transfer rate of the cooling surfaces must be prevented. In most cases, any scaling of heat transfer surfaces is caused by the precipitation of carbon calcium carbonate resulting from calcium bicarbonate naturally present in the cooling water, breaking down under rising temperatures. For these reasons, scale formation is most prominent in the hotter sections of heat transfer equipment. Sometimes when the scale formation is heavy in these hot sections, there is no scaling at the cooling water inlet with the clean, bare metal exposed to corrosion. In order to prevent excessive scale in a system, at the same time to avoid corrosion, a practice sometimes used if control conditions are suitable and temperature differentials are small. This is called controlled scale treatment by which a thin flame of calcium carbonate is allowed to form through the system. This ultimately protects the metal surface from the corrosion without affecting the heat transfer rate. Sometimes corrosion spots in boilers are attacked by hydrogen in power boilers. Hydrogen damage is found only in the steel underlying an area where visible corrosion has occurred in service. Hydrogen thus produces damage to steel parts in boilers. Since this is not directly associated with corrosion, we are not going to discuss the subject here. Use of chemicals to remove oxygen. Sodium sulfide is often used to supplement mechanical deaeration in order to reduce the dissolved oxygen to zero. Particularly in boilers working at pressures below 2000 pounds per square inch. However, sodium sulfide increases dissolved solid content in the boiler water and may require increased blow down rates. Further, there is some evidence of sulfide breakdown at high pressures with the formation of sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. These acidic gases diffuse into the steam and may cause corrosion at the point of initial condensation in the turbine and heaters. Consequently, 
Sulfide should not be used in excess at high boiler pressures. This means maintaining the sulfide concentration in the boiler only slightly above the level required to react with the quantity of oxygen entering the boiler. With the low and medium pressure boilers, an excess of 20 to 50 ppm can be used safely. Hydrazine is rapidly replacing sodium sulfide as oxygen remover. The principal advantages of hydrogen over sodium sulfide are it is volatile and its reaction products with oxygen are also volatile. Therefore, hydrazine does not increase the dissolved solid content of the water. By thermal decomposition, only the neutral gas, hydrogen and alkaline gas, ammonia are formed. The reaction of hydrazine and oxygen is as follows. Hydrazine N2 H4 plus O2 gives you nitrogen plus H2O water. Hydrazin decomposes at temperature above 400 degree Fahrenheit and the following reaction takes place. Hydrazin plus hydrogen gives nitrogen and hydrogen and ammonia. Because of the volatility and the decomposition at elevated temperatures, only small residual of the order of few parts per million can be maintained in the water of a medium pressure boiler. It is therefore apparent that this will provide protection against only small quantities of oxygen entering the boiler. Therefore, the oxygen must be removed from the feed water as completely as possible and the hydrogen should be added in sufficient concentration. The reaction between hydrazine and oxygen is a function of time, temperature and concentration. This relationship is shown in figure 4. These conditions must be observed to prevent corrosion or to reduce corrosion in boiler operating at low or medium pressures. Figure 4 illustrates hydrazine time temperature relationship for 90% oxygen removal at pH 9.5. You can see here as the temperature increases the time required for 90% oxygen removal is getting decreased. Conditions for control. It can be generalized from the above observations that three conditions are necessary for corrosion control in boilers. They are the alkalinity reserve of the boiler water should be sufficiently high to neutralize any acidity introduced into or formed in the water. The pH of the solution should not be less than 11 at working temperature, which means maintaining a caustic soda concentration of at least 2 parts per 10,000 when sodium carbonate or trisodium phosphate is also present, at least 5 parts per 1 lakh in the absence of other strongly basic salts. The dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide dissolved in the feed water should be reduced to low level. The dissolved oxygen content should be less than 0.01 ml per liter for boilers operating at pressures between 400 and 800 pounds per square inch. The deaerating equipment with the low pressure boilers is normally not so good, but a dissolved oxygen content greater than 0.1 ml per liter is definitely harmful and severe corrosion troubles are bound to occur in some parts of the plant if this limit is exceeded. Sodium sulfide or hydrazine should be added to feed water in quantity sufficient to react with any oxygen not removed by the deaerators. And tubes and drums should be well cleaned at every opportunity to remove loosely held scale, rust or dirt. When boilers are shut down for overhaul, Every effort should be made to empty completely the drums and all tubes. In the case of shutdown for any length of time, it is an advantage to place trays of quick climb or calcium chloride in the drums. If the boilers are not to be emptied, they should be filled as full as possible with the deaerated water containing caustic soda and hydrazine and all vents closed. Equipment required for corrosion control In order to minimize corrosion of feed water lines and equipment, boiler internal surfaces and condensate return lines, it is essential that proper water treatment equipment may be. 
it is essential that proper water treating equipment may be employed to accomplish the following one reduction of dissolved oxygen in the boiler feed water to the lowest possible limits two reduction of carbon dioxide present in the boiler feed water as free carbon dioxide and the form of bicarbonate and carbonate alkalinity in practically all plants complete elimination of dissolved oxygen and free carbon dioxide is mandatory however the degree to which it is necessary to reduce the carbon dioxide present as bicarbonate or carbon alkalinity depends upon the plant requirements as related to boiler pressure quantity of condensate reforms steam usage etc many industrial units are now available for water treatment and corros- corrosion control treatment and control of feed boiler water natural water is not normally suitable for boiler use unless it is treated since untreated water may cause corrosion in the boiler parts and other associated troubles water of various sources and localities has different compositions and hence it is difficult to prescribe any standard form of water treatment however natural water can be classified into two main types one water with a low hardness or soft water containing calcium and magnesium salts in amounts at about 150 ppm hot water containing salts in quantities up to 500 ppm or more soft water can normally be made satisfactory after internal treatment but specific treatment can only be found out after examination of the supply water for a given insulation in the case of internal trouble addition of chemicals reacts with water entering boiler resulting precipitation of hardness salts as sludge which is removed during blow down a properly balanced treatment is necessary to convert all hardness salts into soft and easy flowing sludge to protect boiler against corrosion hot water presents difficulties in water treatment process suspended sludge may promote the cause of corrosion and other difficulties choice of treatment again depends on the raw water supply for internal treatment the following chemicals or mixtures are normally used sodium phosphate this precipitates calcium magnesium salts as soft calcium and magnesium phosphate sodium aluminate this is used as a coagulant tannins they render the precipitates free flowing by surface action absorb oxygen from boiling water and act as protection against corrosion starch it is used sometimes as an alternative to tannins or with tannins it absorb traces of oil that may get into boiler water sodium sulfide it reacts with the dissolved oxygen present in water forming sodium sulfate alkali normally caustic soda is used it improves alkalinity to boiler water sodium sulfate which is used when water is deficient in this compound a minimum ratio of 2.5 for sodium sulfate phosphate is recommended for the protection against caustic cracking the quantity of chemicals to be added may be determined by the following test hardness the hardness should be always be zero it is also an indication of scale forming tendency in boiler phosphate the residual quantity of phosphate normally should be not less than 50 and not more than 100 ppm it is expressed as trisodium phosphate it is the most important test to maintain zero hardness and in water alkalinity the total alkalinity expressed as calcium carbonate should not be less than 15 to 20 percentage of the dis- total dissolved salts in hot water heating systems and where condensed steam is returned to the boiler feed it is advantageous to use hydrazine as an alkalinity control since it is also removes dissolved oxygen total dissolved solids total dissolved solid present in boiler water plus due to the addition of chemicals for treatment should not exceed 2000 to 4000 ppm since there are several influencing factors only experience can indicate the optimum condition sodium sulfate and caustic soda ratio where there is no riveted joint it is not very essential to maintain this ratio but in riveted boiler the recommended ratio is 
It is also a protective against intergranular corrosion of tube plates or stressed areas in boiler. Ideal boiler. Quick climb treatment is often resorted to as a protection against corrosion when boiler is ideal for a few days. Alternatively, if a boiler is to be made ready for immediate use, it should be emptied and cleaned and then filled completely with feed water, sufficiently made alkaline by addition of caustic soda, to which sodium sulphide has been added to the extent of 100 to 150 ppm as an oxygen absorber. The water should be tested for caustic soda and sodium sulphide residual from time to time. Conclusions Instances of corrosion in water environment in thermal power plants have been described. Basic theories underlying this corrosion phenomenon have been briefly discussed. The factors responsible for the failures of metals as a result of corrosion in thermal power plants have been pointed out. Different methods commonly adopted to combat corrosion in thermal power plant have been indicated. Current experience shows that Corrosion in thermal power plants leads to a considerable degree of metal loss. This affects boiler operation, increasing plant shutdowns. Water chemistry holds a responsible role in corrosion in thermal power plants. It is therefore felt that arrangements should be made so that powerhouse people can have laboratory services for routine check of water chemistry under a qualified chemist. The operating personnel of powerhouses should have specified knowledge of modern remedial, remedial measures to combat corrosion in power plants. For future guidance of operating personnel as well as for control measure, it would be helpful if the causes of corrosion failures are systematically investigated and a record is maintained. Powerhouses should have necessary equipment for corrosion control. Some case histories. Figure says corrosion spots in the feed water pipe underneath crust. Case study 1. Superheated tubes of a boiler showed very a heavy deposit of salts carried over in the steam due to excessive concentrations in the boiler water. You can see beneath the scales, you can see pits, crevices holes. Figure 7 illustrates the pitting corrosion on boiler tube due to oxygen concentration and feed water. The number of pitting, pitting pits spotted in the boiler tube. Corroded tube due to heavy deposit. The investigation revealed that there was no control over the total quantity of dissolved and suspended solids. Corrosion started beneath the crust. Figure 8 depicts the microstructure showing intercrystalline grain boundary corrosion. Microstructure of corroded tube. Microstructure shows the presence of intercrystalline grain boundary corrosion. Figure 9 shows the corrosion of tube as a result of adhering scale. The scale adhering to the surface of the tube and which was not removed resulted corrosion under the scale in presence of water containing dissolved oxygen and set up differential aeration. Again this figure depicts the localized corrosion attack due to high concentration of dissolved oxygen. Failure of a tube in an industrial boiler. The investigation revealed lack of standardized method of feed water supply. As a result of high concentration of dissolved oxygen, differential aeration was set up in the tube metal to cause localized attack when the oxygen was absorbed on the surface and diffused towards resulting corrosion. So this figure shows the corrosion products inside the tube. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video.